Welcome to Unity. A new feature in Unity 3 is occlusion culling, an optimization to render only the objects that are visible at any given time. Game levels like this one have hundreds of individual objects, but while we're playing the game, we can only see a small subset of these objects. Unity 3 is optimized to render only the objects that are visible to the camera by using occlusion culling. Umbra is the provider of industry standard occlusion culling, and we've worked together closely to integrate a custom occlusion culling technology right into the Unity engine. This gives you an occlusion culling system that is very easy to set up and very powerful. This is a scene with no occlusion data applied. The scene benefits from frustum culling, but in this scene, every object that falls inside the frustum is rendered. If we look at the frame rate of this scene, we can see that it's okay, but it could be better. So we bake some occlusion data. Now here's the same scene with the baked occlusion data. We can see that the visual experience is exactly the same, but our frame rate is much higher. This performance benefit is because objects that are occluded from view by other objects are no longer being rendered. Let's see how easy it is to set up our occlusion data. There are three key concepts to baking occlusion data in Unity. View areas, static objects, and target areas. A view area is a collection of cells that define all the possible positions that the game camera could be. Each cell contains information about exactly which other objects are visible when the camera is inside of it. When baking the occlusion data, every cell performs a visibility test against every static object in the scene. The objects that result in successful visibility will be rendered when the camera enters that particular cell. Everything else will be occluded out of the rendering queue. Visibility calculation of static objects is extremely accurate. For moving objects, the setup is almost the same, except instead of marking objects as static, we define target areas. Now we have a gigantic cityscape with lots of tall buildings and cars that spawn procedurally. Our goals for this scene are the same, to only render the objects that are visible to the player. So in this case, we want to occlude the static buildings that can't be seen, as well as the cars that are moving around unpredictably. We have our view area set up as normal, but we also have a target area in this scene. Each view area cell knows which target area cells are not visible. So as the cars move from one target cell to another, they are automatically culled out of the rendering queue when they move into a cell that is not visible from the camera's position. If we turn off the occlusion visualization, we can see exactly how much is going on in the game that is not taking up any cycles in our rendering pipeline. We've seen how your game can benefit from occlusion culling. Now let's look at the new Occlusion Culling Editor. When this window is present, the Occlusion Culling Overlay will appear in the scene view. From here, you can see exactly how your view and target areas are set up, and also visualize the occlusion data before entering play mode. In the Object tab, you can create or select an occlusion area that defines your view and or target areas. You can change the resolution of the target area cells per occlusion area, and see the resulting density. You have plenty of options to bake your occlusion data as efficiently as possible. In the Bake tab, you can set the global property for view cell resolution, select the quality, and initiate the bake. We hope you've enjoyed this first look at the new occlusion culling system that's coming in Unity 3.